Hi, my name is Avidan, and I'm going to be talking about sweatshops and how they're beneficial to poor developing third world countries. A sweatshop is a factory or a, or a workshop in which um, their manual workers are employed for long hours on a, and under poor conditions. My first point is that sweatshops can cause economic development in a country. In a study by Benjamin Powell, um, an assistant professor at so Suffolk University, um, he's, he's a professor of economy. Um, he did a study on 11 um, countries that had sweatshops in them. Out of those 11, nine of them had um, showed that um, sweatshop wages are either equal to or exceed the average income of people in them. And in four countries, Haiti, Cambodia, Nicaragua, and Honduras, they actually doubled. Sweatshops can also cause economic growth and in a quote by Powell, he says, it was not long ago that sweatshops existed in non-wealthy Asian countries. Those countries that she was referring to are South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Those countries now have pretty good economies now. My second point is that workers can benefit from sweatshops. Working, working in a sweatshop is mutually beneficial. So here's an example. Um, in an average day at the Nike factory in Vietnam, um, a worker can earn $54 a month, which is three times more than the minimum wage paid at um, a state-owned um, enterprise. C. Chi, a Vietnamese worker at this Nike factory, says, says that the best thing about working in, at the factory is that she doesn't have to work outside, which is um, an alternative to farming, where they would have to farm 10 to 14 hours a day at a rice paddy working outside. Boycotting and shutting down sweatshops do not, does not help um, end poverty in these areas. In South Africa, um, it's the home of one of the highest unemployment rates. Nokutla Masanga used to work in a factory that paid well below minimum wage in South Africa. That factory was shut down and she lost her job and now she has to take care of four of her family members. If the law was to shut down every uh, over the 300 plus factories in South Africa, there would be 2,000 jobs that would vanish and those people would be unemployed. My third point is working in a sweatshop is better than the other alternatives. Although a sweatshop is not ideal conditions, they provide a regular income for the people who work in them. The Nike factory in Pakistan, workers earn five times more than other work, than the other workers in the country. And in Honduras, the sweatshop workers earn $13.10 versus what workers in the other part of the country where they only earn $2 a day. And here's an example of the, an alternative to sweatshops. In 1994, U.S. Senator Tom Parkin proposed boycotting sweatshops, sweatshop products. In response, a Bangladesh factory fires 50,000 child, um, child workers. A British charity, Oxfam, stated that most of these children that were fired from the sweatshops fell into prostitution or scavenging. And in conclusion, Sweatshops are, not, are beneficial to third world countries, and the workers benefit from a consistent wage, and it causes economic growth like in South Korea or Hong Kong.
All right, the proposition at the beginning is almost stated as a question, and I know ultimately you do make it uh, a little bit clear what the claim is, but this is one of those things that I know that people sometimes do. They, you know, they're used to writing essays, and they, they phrase things in a particular way. We want your argument to be clearly a declarative sentence, so don't, don't pussyfoot around with any of that kind of stuff. Uh, there's no setup of what the content is going to be, so there's no preview of what the supporting points are going to be. I think that would help the audience follow your argument a little bit more clearly, and at the end it would make a summary a lot more effective. On the other hand, you did signpost the secondary points as you got to them very clearly, so that was easy to follow, uh, and I don't think even people who are casual listeners would have gotten lost. Uh, I just think you want to give them a little bit extra help. Uh, the content on the arguments, I think you explain ideas pretty well. Your proof, you're very dependent on examples, and you've got some very good examples on those. I think that all of the examples uh, illustrate the points that you're talking about pretty well. You do want to give us a source citation on the examples, and I heard a couple of source citations, but you weren't consistent in doing that. Uh, same thing with the statistics you had, for instance, about uh, the wages in Pakistan and Honduras, and earlier there was something else about what the the average uh, wage was, and I know that that came from someplace, but it's not attributed in your speech, and that's going to add to the credibility of your argument. I think, like I said, that you did a good job outlining what your claim is and the general perspective on those particular points. Uh, it would be stronger if the evidence citation was clearer. That would make it maybe a little bit uh, more credible, and then I think you could probably extend the information a little bit more with some more statistics. So, uh, like I said, although I think you've got some very good examples there, I'm not sure how generalizable they always are. So uh, any additional information there would be helpful. I think you did a nice job speaking to the audience for the most part uh, as well. All right. Thank you much.